Hi everybody, it's Amiya here, and today is about Power Windows and Vignettes. And yes, there are many ways and techniques to work with these tools, but I will show you a very simple and effective way, nothing complicated, just the basic stuff and really easy. But before I start, let me tell you that I'm going to challenge you today a bit. More about this on the end of this tutorial here and I will pick up a winner and you can win something. So if you want to have fun and send me your results, but now let's start with this little tutorial. Creating a vignette in DaVinci Resolve is really easy. For all beginners who have no idea how to create a vignette, for example, this is the common and quickest way. Just add a serial node and create a circle power window, then adjust it to your needs, something like this, invert it and decrease the curve, for example, or your gamma and done. This is the way the most of you create and apply a vignette and there's nothing wrong with it. But mostly we can see that a vignette is applied and this is one part of a better vignette because the best vignette is a vignette which can not be seen. It should be more subtle in other words. I guess you got the idea. So we are here to learn something, right? And as you already know, my concern is to help you to bring your color grading skills to the next level. And so today I want to show you how to create better vignettes and really just the basics. First step I always do is to analyze the image, looking for lightning, especially light direction, where does the light comes from, where are the shadows, are the shadows important, what angle was this image shot from and what about the contrast. Those are the main things to consider if it comes to read an image in context with exposure and finally vignettes or dodge and burning. By the way, dodge and burning is finally nothing else than using power windows to adjust zones or areas in the image differently. To introduce a bit more light or midtones here and a bit more shadow there and of course let your subject pop out a bit more or makes the image more flat. Yes, this can happen too. Okay, I have three different shots here in my timeline and I want to show you what we can do in a very simple but effective way to bring more contrast and more attention to our subject without touching the contrast slider. Let's start with this shot here, not a very good shot in context with colors. Look here, this greenish color bendings, those are typically for an early JH5 but that's okay for me because today we want to see how we can affect the image with a more advanced vignette and power windows and we don't have to care about colors too much. What you will learn today is a more dungeon burning technique than just applying a simple vignette, what I showed before. And I color and exposure corrected these shots in front of the tutorial so that we can concentrate only on the power windows, okay? In this image here, the light comes from top. It's very diffuse sunlight shining through clouds or is blocked by the building surrounding our subject, but behind her, here in the background, we see a more sunny part. This gives us a very moody image and it fits to our subject, which is not smiling, not happy, and it seems she is beaten, standing alone in between the rushing crowd, feeling alone, maybe lost. Look at her cheeks and forehead. There we got light, shining vertical from above. Let's try to bring in here more contrast to get a better grading in terms of storytelling because that's the job of a colorist. Let's start with a serial node and what I normally do now is to bring the subject more in foreground just by decreasing the parts of the image where we have less light or more shadows by following the light in this case from top. I start with a simple circle and adjust it more to the top where the light comes from, but the circle doesn't fit my light direction enough. Look at this. It's almost parallel. That's not what I want. It's too unnatural in the scenery and so I need a bit more cone-shaped light. Therefore, I convert my simple power window to a Bezier curve. And now I can add more points to it. It's the same as if I would using the curve tool for building my power window. Okay, and I want to shape the circle on top wider, something like this. Here the sun 
from the background should not be included in this shadows. I want to use it to connect to the light cone. Therefore, I leave it out of my area, which I want to darken. Okay, this looks good enough. Now I invert my window and crank up the softness. Something like this. And now I switch my curves and adjust the custom curve to my needs just by lowering the highlights a bit, affecting the upper midtones, of course, too. And look how much more the subject comes out. Let's go on. Now I add a parallel node and now I want to do the opposite, but not the same shape, not by creating a simple outside node. The goal is to overlap shadows and highlights a bit more because this will create much smoother transitions. Okay? This node is for increasing the highlights and upper midtones a bit. And this will introduce more contrast to our image too. So keep always an eye on the wall image if doing this. My shape looks now a bit different and this time I keep the curve more close to the subject. Finally, a lot of softness and done. Looks good. Now I create another parallel node and now it comes to our typically vignette. Let me do this quickly. That's it. Now all nodes together on and off. Look at this. The girl is now popping out. Normally I do it more subtle, but now you can see how much we can affect the image. She is now much more isolated, standing clearly in front of the rest of the scenery. And by the way, this is a very good technique to introduce more depth to an image too. Let's do the same with a second shot here. Now we have a similar scenery, but with a subject more on the right side, leaving the left side more empty to introduce space for our eyes, to let breathe the image. And we already have a lot of depth and this shot is good composed because these lines here are crossing almost inside the image, just a bit outside, but I digress because after all, we won't want to learn anything about compositing and blocking today, but how to get better vignettes, right? Okay, the light comes straight from the upper right. So the first thing I want to do is to decrease the most left part of the image. This time I create a curve around my subject, including the whole right part of the image, because this time we want to keep this part as it is. This looks good so far. And now the second note, which is for lighten up our subject. And now I want to bring in a shape more like a beam and crossing her face just a bit here on the forehead something like this and increasing it a bit. Okay. Finally, our vignette. Let me just copy and paste it from our first shot and all together on and off. Look, look what a contrast. And if you look now on the parade here on the scopes, while I turn this three nodes on and off, can you see how much contrast we introduce without using the contrast slider just by dodging and burning. Okay, let's try another scene, but this time not a close up, this time a wider scene, a full shot. The light comes from the upper left corner and the sun is still very high because we have a lot of light on the shoulder of this guy here and the shadows here on the boat of this woman here are very short. So it must be around midday or maybe early afternoon. Anyway, this time we want to create a more wider beam of light and therefore I want to create a very wider shape, just two lines here. So we darken the lower left corner and the upper right part of the image to bring the light more out. Something like this looks good. Yes. Now on the second note, I want to create a very fast and simple shape around these two subjects, but not touching the upper border of the image. And again, a bit increasing the highlights and upper midtones and finally Let's copy and paste our vignette again to this shot too. Okay, all three nodes on and off. Looks good to me. But what I don't like is that we decreased the colors here in the corner too. Let's fix this. 
What I did here in the curves is to lower my highlights, right? The problem doing it this way is that we decrease the luma and the chroma at the same time. There's nothing wrong with it, but especially the highlights regulate the gain of the chroma. So by decreasing the chroma in highlights reduces saturation too, and this can be avoided by just lowering the loma only. So all we have to do is to un Gang, ungang this curves by clicking this little guy here. This separates all color channels from each other and of course from the Luma 2. Now we can adjust these channels differently. If I reset my color curves to the origin values, I do this quickly and I create another version for comparison. And if I reset the colors like this, I bring back the saturation. Now look at this. If I switch between these two versions, you can see how much this affects the result. And here's a little hint. If you increase a bit of midtone details in the note which highlights the subjects, you push the contrast more and more up. And of course, vice versa, decreasing the midtones in the note which darkens increases the contrast again. And but be careful, this can look very unnatural if you go too far. Okay, now it's up to you and maybe you have different approaches or a different note structure or technique for working with power windows, so feel free and send me your work as a very short clip. You just have to introduce depth and contrast and it's a kind of relightening in image too. So only power windows, no glow, no soften or peaking highlights or something like this and no keys or qualifiers, just power windows, okay? Send me your clip and the note tree. You will find my email address in the channel info. I will review all clips and I will determine a winner from all submissions and the winner will then receive an optional item of his choice worth around 40 bucks and I have some different articles. There are various things to choose from so you can choose between the high quality HDMI cable, filters, lens cleaning set or an Amazon voucher. And if you do so, I will repeat such little challenges and of course, always picking a winner. But all of this only makes sense if some people really join in and take part. It's up to you. So send me your results. I'm really excited and looking forward to it. And if you like this little tutorial, please don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for watching. You all a great time. Bye.